Ta-da! Catlia Bicalhoi. Who'd have thought? Well, Q tells us, Q Gardens tells us it is registered as Catlia Bicalhoi. She will be Lelia Diana for me for as long as I can remember Lelia Diana, which I have a much easier time doing than Catlia Bicalhoi or Bicalhoi. Anyway, thank you so much for being here. This is a care collab about my beautiful little dwarf Lelia called Lelia Diana on my label, in my books, and in my memory. I am teaming up today with Cloud Forest Vibes, Orchids and More, and Matt by Nature. I can only say so much regarding my little Lelia Diana. The fact that she is here with me in southern Spain gives her an ideal environment to be able to thrive and survive because where she comes from in Brazil, in the Oregon mountains, she can be found at elevations of 500 meters to 2000 meters, which is amazing because her temperature range is so versatile. The fact that I get down to five degrees Celsius here in my climate and all the way up to 40 degrees Celsius during the summer, perfect. Lelia Diana apparently can tolerate these temperatures. And as you can see, she is in bloom for the first time. And she lives outside all year round. I don't have to bring her in. I never actually had to bring her in because of the timing when I received her, it was heading into spring and then I could acclimate her through the hot summer. She did okay. She wasn't growing quickly, just getting her bearings, finding her feet, so to speak. And then as from September, she started to pick up and get more and more vigorous. Vigorous in a sense that she doesn't grow a lot of lush foliage, but she does grow one new growth per year for the time being. And the one you're seeing now in bloom, clearly that is our 2021 growth. She lives together with the Rapiculus Lelias and her setup is exactly like my Rapiculus Lelias, even though she is a Lelia or a Catlia, according to Q. But because I have her in the similar setup, I treat her exactly the same. And that is why she lives in the group that she lives in. And during the summer, she is up on top of a table when it comes time that the sun starts to directly hit the surface of that little table. I bring her down into the shade and you can see how yellow her leaves are. And that is because of the amount of light that she gets. Now it is my understanding she doesn't need that much light because her habitat is actually forests where she grows on lichen covered branches. So she has a lot more shade in her natural habitat. However, as I am treating her like a Rapiculus Lelia, that is why you see the color of the leaves that she's got. And she can really handle the light considering how tiny her structures are. You see that? She is really a dwarf Lelia, but these leaves very, very rarely heat up, even if I am a little bit too late to catch it and bring her down into the shaded shelf of that little table. So she can tolerate a lot more light than her natural habitat would actually tell us. Not a single amount of sunburn, a little bit of freckling in the leaf in the back. When I say I treat her like my Rapiculus Lelius, she is in a semi-hydro setup. She has only got inorganic media in the pot, and that would be lava rock, probably ceramics, and I'm saying probably because I'm not entirely sure anymore. But when she arrived, I was dealing with lava rock, ceramics, and sand. And then I added a little bit of grit on the surface of the media here, just to fill in the blanks a little bit because my climate can be extremely dry, and she prefers it a little bit more humid than what I can provide. So I added grit as opposed to sprinkling another layer of sand. The sand being there to fill in the crevices, just like I would with my Rapiculus Lelias, but in order for her to have a little bit more moisture around the roots, as opposed to the whole mix being far too airy. So I didn't want to clog up the pot with too much of the sand layering. I just added some grit on the top and seems to have worked a treat. She's also a little bit of a climber which is going to be interesting considering when her next growth is going to come out. Of course, one anticipates, you know, this one to then generate the next growth. Is she hopefully gonna come maybe this way into the pot a little, or is she gonna extend in a single line one more time? I will get away with it for one year, but as you can see, I put her into the middle of the pot, not anticipating that her growth habit or her rhizome would be as long because when I got her, she was only this tiny little piece that is in the back here, these little structures right here. 
So she grew this one for me last year and we are going airborne. And then this one is 2021. Eventually I may have to address this pot and maybe scoot her back into a corner because I do like to go diagonal in square pots. So she may end up somewhere back here if she continues this growth trend. She is not fragrant, unfortunately, but she is very, very pretty. Now, there's one thing to be said about this bloom. Being her first bloom, I have waited a long time to film this bloom. So, what am I going on about? Well, her sepals have not folded out. You see how they are so attached to the lip there? They should be like this. It should be down. That would be her shape, her ideal shape. And then, well, <laughs> this is because the petal is hot. So you see how the sepals are really just still tucked in to the lip like that. I'm just gonna go with the fact this is a quirk of a first time bloom that she didn't actually open up properly. But other than that, we can see the potential and the beauty of what is going on here. I am glad that I eventually did acquire this little Lelia Diana. I've had her on my radar when I was building this collection from Jump Street. However, one thing always put me off and that was the retracting, refracting, reflexing petals. So in pictures, when I was studying her and doing some research, wondering should I or shouldn't I, the fact that the petals have this characteristic, yeah, that wasn't really something that I thought was ideal. It was not really my cup of tea either. I would prefer them to be more flat, but this is one of her things. This is what she does. And it's not only because the leaf here is catching that petal. You can see the shape. It curls back. Not a big fan of blooms that do that. Anyway, she's here with me, and I hope that the next blooming, the sepals down here, will actually open up and show her true shape, which should be like this. Sorry, this is all looking a little bit awkward, but I hope that you get my point. I have to zoom in, because you can tell the bloom is not that big. It is big for the size of the orchid. The bloom size is approximately four centimeters across in real life, but that is rather large in the proportion of the orchid itself, which is about maybe 15 centimeters of length of the whole growth, not including the climbing habit, but from the base to the tip, which is a pretty good size bloom for such a teeny tiny orchid. But I didn't want to wait that much longer. I do not know how long this bloom would last in looking so pristine. And that is why I'm filming my video today and I'm not going to wait too long for the upload date just so that we have a little bloom to look at because this bloom has now been open two weeks. I have always been waiting for the sepals to fold out. Anyway, so we're going to see a bloom that is properly formed on Matte by Nature. I don't know about Cloud Forest Vibes, Orchids and more. I've never seen his orchid, but needless to say, you can see the potential and the beauty of this bloom simply because the lip is ever, ever so striking. Very, very beautiful. Big, big lip in comparison to what actually the size of the orchid is. That lip just feels like it's not on the right plant. <laughs> what do I do with her? Well, in winter, I try to keep her on the drier side and semi-hydro drier is only ever mentioned in adverted palmers because you can keep the reservoir wet, damp, but not full. So I flush her a lot with plain RO water during the winter because that is not when she is in active growth for several months. Once she kickstarts into active growth, she gets 160 parts per million of a well-balanced fertilizer. And once a month, a combined 100 parts per million of seaweed and Kelmag as a supplement. But I only start that once she starts growing and she doesn't grow fast. So once you see a nubbin growing out of the base of the orchid, it takes another almost six to seven months for that growth to not even mature. As you can see, the growth is not fully formed, but the orchid is in bloom. So this is about seven months of growing for that little structure. And eventually this little leaf will then develop fully and become the same size as the leaf next to it. 
So that is the nice thing, despite being slow. At least we don't have to wait for the bloom until the growth is fully formed. Somewhat a little bit of a Sophronites characteristics there that the bloom is protected by the leaf and eventually will pop out through the sheath. Because of the climbing habit, she would be absolutely a great candidate for mounting. I cannot accommodate that here in my climate. She would need a lot more water and care if I had her mounted because I have approximately 30% humidity during the hottest months of the year from April through to October and that is not ideal. That is why I keep her in such an airy mix of lava rock and ceramics so that she always has moisture around the roots during her growing time and she has a dryer, again in inverted commas dryer, set up during the winter months and I can easily control that by how much I flush and how much I drain the reservoir while she is not in active growth. I also want to make mention that she is not a big root grower so that is not something that we can always count on. There needs to be real care taken regarding the maintenance and care of the roots that she has. This is not a lot of roots. So the next growth here, we'll have to wait and see where the roots go. But I have to be really cautious that I don't lose any of these root tips because they will grow from the back when the new growth starts. So the roots on this orchid will only start growing when this growth here pushes out its next new growth, then this growth will bring out roots. And again, usually that is as we get into the warmer months of the year. And then there's a problem again with the humidity and the roots also grow very, very slowly. So everything about this orchid and its growth habit and growth pattern, it is slow. But I normally find that slow growing orchids also have a very, very long extended bloom duration. So this is now two weeks. We've had some extremely hot weather. We've had some dry winds and the bloom itself is looking still pristine. The bloom in the sun, she has a beautiful little crystalline effect. It's like fairy dust has been sprinkled on her just as an afterthought to make her even more, more striking cannot be seen today, we have an extremely hazy day. But there is a crystalline effect, it just looks absolutely magical. I have had no pest issues with my Lelia Diana whatsoever. No aphids, no scale, no mealybugs. There's a lot to be said about this orchid. First of all, it is not a space hog. It doesn't require much care and maintenance. The only thing being, if you need to adapt the setup to accommodate for the humidity, you can see she is robust enough that she can take it. And if you have a temperature that only drops down to five degrees Celsius in winter, she can even live outside because she can handle that. You've got very hot summers, she can live outside because she can handle that. And you don't have to be in Southern Spain to give her enough light. Clearly, as you can see by the color of my leaves, and as I've mentioned, she can handle a lot of light and she can take it a little bit shadier because of where she comes from, from those forest. Apart from being really, really slow, I do not regret my decision in buying her after all. I do hope though that the next bloom will be a beautiful opened up bloom, despite the fact that the petals will always retract a little bit away, giving a little bit of a curled presentation. But anyway, Matt by Nature, his video will be posted today as well as Cloud Forest Vibes, Orchids and more. They have different setups, they are in different countries, different environments. So I encourage you to check out the links in the description below and see how their little Lelia Diana or Katia Bikalhoi are doing. Meanwhile, I really appreciate the fact that you came over and had a look-see at mine. Your time is appreciated. If you have any questions, if you happen to have a Lelia Diana and this didn't quite clarify everything and you still have some questions, please leave those in the comments below. I will be very, very happy to elaborate. And until then, and hopefully until the next video, have yourselves a wonderful day. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.